open up your eyes Hide in the back just to keep you all bright Take a good look, you better open up your eyes Your life's a stick and it just can't wait I don't want Babylon to steal your way You better not give in to them false lies Consciousness, we have to just open up your eyes Soon we find out who is real revolutionary Cause I don't want my people to be contrary Brother you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're So right, we go fight, we love to fight, we gonna fight Fight for our rights Divided rule could only tear us apart In every man chest There beats a heart Soon we'll find out who is Real revolutionaries Cause I don't want my people to be tricked by mercenaries. Saba? Saba, Oh, Must say we live in one song, huh? Wait, it's our life, bruh. How, how is it, yeah? Way ahead of his time. Nah, not ahead. It's, it's the, the, I think it's on rehappening of old times, yeah? Never learned a lesson. Time, time, times never change. Right? Never change. Part of the Find problem is in the same situation. That's why we gotta share the stories and share the stories. Ooh. Why maybe it's super important this podcast that we can share stories so that we don't forget. Yeah, one generation later, if Tutu never tell me, never tell you, nobody remember. Yeah, super important. Now, now get the podcast for lock them in. Lock them in. And then future generations just going one day, huh? Cause you guys, I just found this crazy thing. I didn't even heard of it. It was called Spotify. Bruh, I think this is like the Kupunas made this. Yeah, this old school thing. Bruh, I mean, look, cousin, I found my great, great Kupuna on this, bruh. And these guys, they sound just like us. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Now, yeah, uh, Sunday had chance to, hey, I get those videos, I found them. The entire collection after Kupu Ipao passed away. I've seen the, them, you was playing them. We get the whole collection. You was playing yeah. them, yes sir. And uh, Big shout out to Puhi Pao. On a color. Oh, yep. Yeah, auntie, love the you guys. Namako Kaina. Namako <laughs> And that, all that was was a record of hi our history. And if that wasn't recorded, all of us Kamalese wouldn't have that fire for burn under your ass. Yeah, and give you one direction. I mean, that's definitely what it is for me. And watching that, you know, with Shane as a 19-year-old down there, right, you know, always bring you to tears, but he was asking, Dad, who's that guy right there? Yeah, that's my Kaikina. You know, who's the other guy in the wheelchair? Bah, it's Uncle Nelson, I lie. It's hammers. It's, bah, I, I never met this one, but that one here, I lie. You know? Who came first to these islands? Yeah. Right, heavy songs inside there. And people change, you know, over time, but that was a recording of that fucking fire at that time. Kaho'olave. Nice to see Uncle Skip never changed too much, yeah? Uncle Skip never changed. <laughs> yes, Took a blast from the past. <laughs> and even Uncle Maka said something, huh? Mm hmm. Uh huh. Everybody on the videos, bro. Yeah. Strapping young, looking beautiful. Mm hmm. And had Uncle Bernard, and that's the one, yeah? Ooh. Now, that was the one inside, because Shane was like, Dad, the poem you didn't say the other day, that Papa's poem. Said, Brad, that's a, some poem of all of the songs of the time. Yeah, America Bastard. Yeah, No Tell Me Go. Who Came First. Brad, and if you guys never hear that song, Brad, said, you guys got to hear him, bro. We're going to have one movie night. I like have one movie night, bro. And we just play the whole thing so that, People can come and be blessed. We spoiled. 
Yeah, we hold kind of crazy Ike, bro, and we had relationships with some major people out there in life, bro, and kind of blessed, bro. And they're gone now, and the people that is in touch with us now, that they're never going to get that opportunity. But like I said the last week, yeah, when you get Ike, you got to share them. And I think that's what Auntie Joan Kukui Pong wanted, you know, is please, uh, she's seen the value in the next generation. Not so much living through them again, but bad. know that that is our past, so that we don't go do that again. That's why we never go take over the airport and go, we did them a different way. <laughs> yeah, we didn't go see council, right? Yeah? And what we was told, bad. <laughs> Whatever you do, not do this. <laughs> that never worked, that's why, right? And that's basically it, you know. <coughs> yeah, that's a that's a powerful um collection. If you guys out there haven't uh checked out Namako Okaina, it's probably the most critical inventory of archive video uh of the Hawaiian movement, in particular a lot of evictions. A lot Waimea, of evictions. Waimea Bay, Waimea Valley. I mean, crazy because we go to all of these places as young Kanaka. Uh, we, we fathers now, we take our families to these places and, you know, I know the story, but I, I you know, tell the cake is like, because you, you, you look the beauty and you know, like go through the, the junk story again, right? But I don't know, maybe important that you get that honor in them, that, that, that feeling in them maybe, yeah. Huh? Time's definitely changing. I mean, you know, it seems like it seems like there's more homeless people than ever before. But before, the homeless people were were all associated with the ocean. Yeah, like you think of like all the homeless camps of of our lifetime was all right alongside the beach. Yeah, most of the homeless camps and, was down below on Hawaiian homes. And today, and today, the majority of the homeless, they're living in the, the cities or they're living in the mountains. Yeah, like the island, the island is too small for the homeless now. And before you could just, you know, go live in one tent in Makua. And it was rough, but it was also kind of major for have the chance to live in that fashion. And, and those days, those days are gone. You know, and there's this new generation of 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 land need for land use. I mean, I I Kawe, I like to me. This is an important topic when we're talking about farming. Is how the hell do you live and farm? How do you afford to live by growing food? That's the question. You know, all the farmers today, we talk about all the successful, quote-unquote, successful farmers. Really, what is, what is that? Maybe we should ask that question. What is one successful farmer? I don't know. Is it the bankroll guy? The guy make the most money? Of the Aina? Well, I'd say in tarot farming, who do you think... <laughs> Who would you say is a successful tarot farmer? I mean, honestly, I can only think of I can only think of Uncle Bobby. But currently, yeah, yeah, back, back, like back, he's everybody had their days. He's right? Right? he's the Raffoons, they still there. I mean, they run more like one community thing though. They 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 harvest a certain amount of poi. Like Uncle Bobby, this guy is like unlimited stacks on stacks, big water behind him, huge acreage in front of him, hammers planting. You know, like that, that's the example. That's the example, guys. All right, so in the tarot world, we have Bobby Pahia. Hey, Uncle Bobby, guess what? Lives in a homestead. Yep, Kula Homestead. Shout out to Hawaiian Homes. How can we have uh, a Bobby Pahia, but last name Nahoy, over here on Oahu, running some unlimited acreage and water? Uncle, <laughs> cool. Uncle's got a pretty big uh, collection of... Yeah, I think Uncle's at 300. <laughs> yeah, you only can make, you only get so much you can provide out of square footage per square foot, right? You can select for a variety of taro for increase the number of of harvest a year. I mean, you can do all kind of things. So okay, so you we're can talking. One we looking, one we looking at overall weight, 
taro production, mm-hmm. right? In a perfect world, Uncle Carl, how much taro would you like to produce? You and me, what a, let's just talk about, let's just a real life, our goal, our goal. Would we like to be at 500 pounds a week, 100 pounds a day? We like be 100 pounds a day. 100 pounds a day. Because literally that's, that's how much we... That would be 20 taros if they're five pound taros. We think that's, that would be 100 taros a week plant in the ground. That's one, that's one goal, bro. But then that would secure our family and then allow our family for share with five other families at the same poundage for consumption. So we at 500 pounds a week. We're looking at seven families. So when you're looking at the Hawaiian homestead, you're looking at... 300 families. 300 families in the homestead divided by seven. You're looking at a, a sizable amount of taro farmers necessary to feed them. A sizable amount of land. Required. And water resources. Yeah, to provide the, po- the kalo. Yeah. yeah. We didn't even talk about the kanaka who are going to work the farm yet. We're just talking about the required square footage and why. It's amazing how the, this formula of kalo farming and agriculture is is an ancient formula that has modern day implications as far as securing land and water for future generations. But it requires, in, in this particular case, I'm going to say it requires Hawaiians of 50% Hawaiian ancestry to start to demand access to land and water for other native Hawaiians to farm so that they can simply eat kalo and poi every day. Aye. Right? Get available you, lands available and we don't need no t- I mean we prove the it. The land is there. I don't care what land. Like we don't like rubbish, but we turn rubbish into pull up. In, if it's in, in Hawaii, we'll do our best to work with it. We make them nice. But hey, help us out. Give us a nice flat, easy one with good irrigation. So we can start to really produce, right? Because that's the other part. The scaling of the production has to do with the layout of the aina. We gotta and get the aina community for too. Yeah. Yeah. I think right now, if it was to go around and I don't know, we, I think that's the beginning. To go around and like out of three hundred houses, how much houses out of the three hundred eat? on a daily basis guarantee we get down to 10 okay now of these 10 daily basis i said they're not once a week twice once a month yeah most likely the daily basis is going to be retired hawaiians Kupuna. kupunas that been eat poi their whole life Aye. on one fixed income but did medium to okay no, yeah. right so they can afford their six dollar bag most likely it's part of the, the budget that's part of the budget that's part of the part budget of the budget auntie across the street see that's the thing though that generation they're slowly passing away that's why i said 10. Kau, you wouldn't believe this we sat down with taro brand yeah they told us that their business model hey uncle skyler they said that their business model is is almost like cigarettes in the sense that their best customers are dying. And that the next generation is not taro eaters. Mm -hmm. And so they're looking at, I mean, literally in their terms, they're looking at changing how poi is consumed to something that people want to purchase. Oh, yeah. Like this, I seen variety packs and snack packs and different little baggies. And trying that, to make that was all Taro brand trying yeah. to increase poi consumption. I think we've had a huge start, you know. I mean, I don't know how many thousands of pounds of pa'i got consumed in the past few years down in Y and I, but it did. It's it's increasing. It, it, even though it has sugar on top and good creamy stuff, I mean. Uncle Skyler. 
The bugger went definitely open doors. It's the best part about doing a podcast at home. Kamba! Uncle! <laughs> yeah, pot taro cooking. Yeah, so get the ulu for kui. We're gonna make the ulu into poi. Then the pot taro is for pot yai. The young boy knows when it started whistling. Love you. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. We have to give some instructions over here because it's Kuki Thursday. And when Kuki we Thursday. come to the Kalo Couch, you know that there's people actually pounding taro right now, making poi, changing those statistics, right. going from um, rice bag to the umeke poi. And um, the best thing about this, this is actually one of the statistics I enjoy sharing. It's because of our current eating habit. There's huge opportunity for gains. You know, if only 10 households eat it daily, that means that every single household that returns back to consuming daily is a huge uptick, huge. uptake of this product and of the resources going back to the community. So, you know, in this time of value, because we're in a time of value right now, you know, I feel like Kawe, we're going to seize the moment. Like, we're talking about future generations. We're talking about taro varieties. We're talking about access to poi. Like, all of these things is boiling down to a very small handful <coughs> that have to be aggressive in their nature to see shit happen. You know, I think about these crazy guys. Let's give a shout out to Cowboy Otsuka. Okay? This Molokai Japanese spoke Hawaiian, most amazing man ever. Okay, this guy, when the UH guys never know the variety, they went to Cowboy. Cowboy would tell them what was. He was the Uncle Jerry before Uncle Jerry. Aye. You know, and gosh, to think of it, one man may have saved the entire native Hawaii, Hawaiian varieties collection. That's true. You look who was the Hama Taro Farmers. A generation ago, how they had Hawaiians, had choke, Jap had, hey, plenty Japanese, plenty Okinawans, yeah, because they know nothing else but farm. It's a generational thing, and right, we're in a, we're in an emergency. Yeah, our kids, that's the generation, and even us, like it, brothers, our age, no eat poi, on a daily basis, and it's crazy. I mean, you just I, it, I don't understand. But well, that's, that's an it's easy. It's that's easy to emergency. understand. It's not accessible. No, because if no money right? to land, then no need Carlo farmers. No need Aina for land for farming. No need via associated with that. Why? 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 Everybody not no more to support. Yeah, the importance in the diet, bro. We gotta we gotta shove hammer that down. We hammer that all the time. People still go McDonald's. Like. You gotta hammer that down. The important. Uh, I think why it's. You, I think it's partly it. it's resurrecting traditions. And and making them accessible, creating clear paths to them, and helping to. You know the thing I notice, people that start eating poi. They're good until somebody runs out of taro. And they gotta go one week back to the race, and then they. They come lazy again or for whatever reasons. And it's like that's kind of like the hardest thing is to sustain it. Right? We talk about yeah. 100 pounds a day is seven families. So these seven families, out of 300 families that is over there, it's like if we had enough to feed 300 families, we would probably get 100. But because we only get enough for feed seven, we're going to be lucky for get two. You know what? <laughs> this is the stupidest thing ever. But. That's okay. It's crazy how, how, you know. <laughs> why is it so challenging? <coughs> why, Kong? Why is it so hard for Hawaiians to want to eat kalo, poi, pa'i'ai on a daily basis? I mean, these are good questions to ask. Is it, is it, I mean. Convenience, I mean, I don't know, man. Convenience. <coughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, bro. 
We eat the roast pork. We eat the, we eat the, we eat the freaking bacon eggs in the morning. But I get kalapa. Get the pie, yeah. I mean, we get them. Come with us in a restaurant. You know what I mean? We get them. The thing come. And don't get me wrong. We slam Subway sandwich. We slam all kind, all kind of cow But as long as, uh, the key is just eat poi Get two. the poi there. Eat, kalo inside, eat poi Eat too. the kalo too. Yeah. Just, just add that in the diet. No yeah. need to stop the rice right away. But just know the difference. Yeah? yeah. And sooner or later, you can... <laughs> yeah, your owner going to change. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and even I, your, your I believe sense that. And you be like, ah, this is not good for me. This is good for me. This is not good for me. This is good for me. This is, oh no, but not good for me. <laughs> it's good for me. <laughs> Took me two years, bro. <laughs> for drink kombucha. <laughs> if any of you guys know Uncle Kao, and you know that both Uncle Kao and myself, <laughs> we come from the We Love Spam Musubi generation. Oh, bro. We are just a little bit different in the amount of years that we took for us to try to separate from that. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I purposely... Oh. What kind of beeps is that, Uncle? I don't know. <laughs> I thought you know my side. I thought you know my side. He's like... <laughs> you was like... <laughs> Oh, there's some random beeps right there. Oh, we'll call you should have swear right at the <laughs> same moment. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I heard him. I thought you never hear him. That's why he's tripping me out. <laughs> I thought it came from over here. Wow. I guess on the Kalo couch, it would just be good to point out that the that the struggle is real. Yeah, the struggle to eat poi every day, the struggle to grow Kalo, the struggle to to kui it, to mill it, to supply it, to all of these things are are not. I don't want to say not easy, but these things are. It's gonna take us effort and time. And, and it, that's what it takes across the board. But just like you're saying, no quit eating rice altogether. Just start adding kalo, poi, pa'i'ai to your diet. You know, you don't need to go plant patches on patches. Start with one five-gallon bucket. Yeah. You know, this is one journey. And every journey starts with the first step. Starts with the first kui, the first bite. The people, a little different too, like the way we do them. It's not like community work there. Sweat equity. That's not what we like. We like you come, and make your own. You own. Like, no, you don't have yours. You don't have a place. Yes, you do. Yeah, you have an opportunity for cut your own little square in the world that is yours. This is really the pathway. Yeah, because we talk about how to make it accessible. First, you gotta come and learn how to farm taro. See what the process is. In wherever environment it happens to be growing in. And you have to commit to some type of consistency. What we see a lot is people really gung-ho the first two days. But then usually the first day they hurt themselves. Because, you know, they physically weren't prepared. Um, and then the second day they go a little bit too easy. And then we don't see them on the third day. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it, right? It, 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 give, them, give them process, you know. Like first, first, you, you got to be physically it. Like seriously, come on! You know, hey, go jump in one hey. boxing ring and go fight one professional boxer if you never did ever train, right? That don't make no sense. So, yes, physically fit, yes, please. And then that's the first thing you, you gotta tell yourself if you're gonna do this or not. That the way before the. So <laughs> if you're not physically fit, and then if you're not right, if you're not physically fit, how can you? How, how can we engage it? Yes. To get to be physically fit, but right. to know. That to get on first base and to hold that base, it requires some level of olakino, of body health. All right. All right. So let's let's just talk pathways. How much time, if I, who work a fifty-hour-a-week job, mm. drive fifteen hours a week, want to spend some time with my kids, my wife sometimes likes me. Mm -hmm. How do I start and engage and begin farming taro? How much time do I have to give? Am I coming? 
once a week, once every other week, once a month. Can I get away with that? If I, if, if I, uh, and if I come in, I say, Uncle Carl, I can give you 12 days a year. I'm going to commit to the last Tuesday of every month. I'm going to tell my wife I'm going to work. I just not gonna tell her I'm gonna work here with you. Um, <laughs> and um, you know, that, can I? Can we in in twelve in twelve days this year? Can we have tarot at the end of it? And at the end of this twelve days, I would say that I'm holding some space. Is that realistic? Or I gotta come? You know what? What is? Mm. And I, I I only ask you this question yeah, no, because no, no, you know. No. <laughs> You, you the most scariest guy for deal with when come to this Tara farming and then you showed up twice and you never come back for two months and then you don't know if Uncle Carl going to be happy for see you or if you're going to give you and Grandpa Jim. You know what I'm saying? So, nah. you know. It's, it's, the, it's the consciousness of, 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 you know, that's what we're talking about. What, what talk about? Imagine, and you, if you're a parent, it's like having one baby. Your commitment to one baby. Everything about it. Yeah, caring for them, feeding them, day and night. I mean, that's the only way I can put it. If if it's not like you can treat them like you can have another baby in your life, then vicariously live through somebody else who has a baby and you become an uncle. Yeah, but then... So for the uncles, what that Uncle Kao is talking about is the uncles come once a month. But the mom and dads, they go in regular... At least on weekly, yeah. bi-weekly relationship with the Aina where they're checking up on them regularly, making sure that the little okay. things, okay. yes, okay. the little things. Checking up on your baby. But of course, the result going to be when you do them like that, you get big taro, right? Yeah. You get nice taro, you get luau, you get food, right? Yes, it's you get directly correlated. To mental feeding, feeding yeah. right? Right, so spiritual much. feeding, right? The, the, these are the things that you get out of it from day one. That's the whole you might not get. You know, when bowl of poi on day one, but the the spiritual bowl of poi you get. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, you get to fill your bowl of light again. Yeah, in this this unconscious world, you get hot sometimes. You're driving yet. You, you know what, Uncle? That was a beautiful way you said it. Come and fill your bowl with light fifty two times a year. Come once a week and fill your bowl with light. Seriously. Come dig in the lepo for find the light. Come make one relationship. This is the kind of people that we're really looking for. We're looking for people that that hungry for something more than what the world has to offer them. Aye. And is willing to come to the Aina and make a, a commitment of a year to see how a regular connection will lead to a meaningful, deep connection that you want to continue. Because that's what it's about. It's not about just having this connection. It's about wanting to grow that connection and having the ability to do so it's like all these unpostable moments and all these unpostable things you know and like you know, you know it's between you and and the Allah spirit bro it's so beautiful and that's the thing you know it's like why uncle you can download like how for the whole process from like come on shit it yeah you know technical process but then if you're I'll watching take, this I'll Patreon right now and you're part of the download and it's ten ninety nine no no I'm just thinking. You know, I mean get the get the babies babies you know, you give birth in nine months, you know, get all these technical things. But then you you the first walk, the first coup, the first time you hear the baby say the that's super special moments and it's only you gotta be there. Just like the Kalo. You, you just gotta be there when the wind blow on your face and you look up and you see Alohi Pa and things just ah, Daniel. What is the word that means the light shining on top of the clown again? <laughs> so awesome. Right? That was a yes, moment. Yes, uh, sir. Yes, sir. Uh. <laughs> that was a moment. Well, these are motivating factors for us, right? Yeah. I mean, some of the things that, that I personally get out of it is like I kind of get to go someplace for a little while. It's different from this world. It's a little bit quieter. You know, I... I want to see the last time I was trenching in that mud and I hit sand. Mm. I felt like I found one treasure, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, there I was digging in the mud <laughs> and I found some sand and I felt special. Yes, man. And, again, you know, again. when you feel special, 
That's a personal thing that feels good, you know? Yeah. And when simple things <laughs> that the Aina provides can make you feel special, it's wonderful. Uh, yeah, call, it's there. I found sad. What? Fucker. Wow. We're going over there and found sad? <laughs> yeah, and the funny thing is when I went back the next day, it had rained all night. And so the same place I found sand was now four feet deep of water. Yeah. And now you're not really finding sand. <laughs> so those moments for find and appreciate the sand are few oh. and far between. Yeah. So you got to really be there in that moment in time to, to appreciate and enjoy it. Yeah, and it. finding that sand painted a picture in my mind of that place that does not look like how that place looks. Yeah, 100 years ago. Yeah. yeah. I, I look at it now because of touching and feeling and smelling that sand. I see something in that place. That nobody else can see, or maybe only few can see. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think Grandpa can even see them, cause they never did see that, and they never see the sand. No. So, that's maybe a selfish moment. Yeah, it is what it is. But it's enjoyable it's nonetheless. A, even when we get plenty of people, you know, when, like we get groups and stuff. The laughter of the land, I, I, I know that. I mean, imagine for a hundred years nobody's been there. Yeah, and for have people back, and especially kids, and the laughter. And everybody aka aka and fooling around. But she happy. I know she happy. Yeah, Diana. I know she happy. Not to botchy ourselves in any which way. But you know how many people have told me that Kahana was a scary place for them growing up? And I never went there. And you know what, uncles? Ever. Being there, sleeping there, all of that. I cannot tell you, I never did get the heebie Even, you know what? Oh, never. I would think that I would get the heebie jeebies walking up the valley in the middle of the night when you come to that bunker, that cement spooky yeah, bunker. Yeah, yeah. And you would, you'd be you just waiting for a spooky lady jump out of the bushes <laughs> somewhere, come up walk across you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're in the pitch black <laughs> in the middle of the valley. I'm like, hey, what is today? When Pran Trap. Hey, look. Fuck. Connie. No. Ah! <laughs> no. Right there. Turning around. Let's no, go, boy. I just got a little bit more inside the blanket. Like, I ain't leaving. I ain't going out of the tent now. <laughs> but just, you know, to have a place like that and feel... But magical. One certain way. And I believe that that is partly because of what we've put into the place as far as aloha into that place. That place feels our aloha. It knows that we're genuine in our commitment to... To tilling that soil and yeah. to seeing the cycles and it's the same everywhere we go, yeah. Like a cool farm, you tell been there three years, never rain. We go, we plant hala, we chant, we sing, chant, sing, celebrate with the keikis. We brought the children. We had Halloween, Halloween. Never stopped raining since we started hala over there. Rain all the time now in Wailua. Madi <laughs> No, for real though, like all, everywhere, even the rubbish place, the thing will change the soil, you know? Yeah, it's been a blessing, yeah, to see the cycles. Um, you know, when we were farming in Waimanalo at, at Mike's place was the parking lot. Mm -hmm. And then the parking lot is uh, covered in mulch. And then we struggle the first season, most of the taro die. And then the second season, hey, we got some kalo. And then the whole, oh, this last third season, bombs again, yeah? Yeah. But it took, it took three, three strikes three, three. for us to be able to, to understand how much effort it takes and to figure out the balance between the breakdown of the soils, yeah, and the water. I mean, that's the other part, right? Mike, water them choke now. Mm -hmm. Second season, never get the good water all. Oh. Wasn't good. Yeah, it's, it, we're all learning. We're all learning. The most important one, I think so, is the relationships. Going through, because... Three years, uncle. Yes, sir. Ah! And then friendships. Hey, all kind of be three years on Saturday. That's right. Wow. First cut. This is our anniversary. Hey! Our farming anniversary. First cut. On October 9th. <laughs> How old you going to be, uncle? 27. 27. <laughs> 27 years ago, he was 27. <laughs> Uncle Chad, what's up? <laughs> That's some good news, too. Good stuff, man. Yeah. 20, 20, 27. <laughs> Three years, man. 
We survived grandpa for three years, you guys. Yeah, I just want to let you know I'm proud of myself. I spent more time with my grandpa in the last three years than in my previous 40 years of life. Yeah. You know, and I learned a lot from this guy, as crazy as he is. The wisdom that he has is so absolute. It's like really strong coffee. Yeah, and you spend a little bit of time, you take a few sips, boom, you get hair right on your chest mm. after, you know? Yeah, but you know, like waste time, fucking. You know, like waste time. His knowledge is not wasteable. What gets spit on is kind of an honor. <laughs> I did not know if I was ready, so I appreciate you because I would. I, I was scared. I'm not going to lie. I wasn't scared of the Aina. I was scared of my grandpa. Mm. And then I had a partner over there made made Kahana seem a little bit more reachable, you know? Yeah, but that guy remind me of my dad, remember? I mean, nothing like at least you're getting yelled at with a friend. And then later on, you'd be, your friend can be like, oh, bro. Oh, you just getting yelled at? You won't fool. Why you had to laugh for that for us? Because <laughs> you're a dummy. Uh -huh. I agree with your grandpa. You're like getting liquids together <laughs> when you cause it when you smoke. <laughs> True story. True story. It's happened a few times. So, yeah. I mean, you know, I think we put it out there, what we're looking for. We're looking for committed individuals that want to have a deep relationship. We have a space to be able to do it. Yes, definitely. How, how does it operate? Right? It operates on you got to start it. You got to reach out and call us. You know what? My favorite one that I had in the last month, I don't know if you guys out there on Instagram, but Instagram messages does not allow for you to search in the messages by keywords. It searches by the name of the person. Right, right. So when you're getting 20 or more messages a day in three to four days, Trying to find a message from somebody is like pretty difficult. So this lady messages me and she wants to come and cool you with her daughter. And I we're, I'm messaging back and then hey, four days goes by. I can't find her. One week later, she messages me. She's like, wow, bro, you know, I cannot <laughs> believe I made a donation to your fundraiser and everything. You know, you just have the respect. I just want to teach my daughter. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, thank you so much for messaging me back. Right. Now, if that lady didn't reach out the second time, she would have never come to my house the following Thursday and end up making point and having a great time. Yeah, yeah. But it kind of took her a little bit of effort because the reality is it's just me and Uncle Kyle. <laughs> you know, everyone thinks there's like some huge organization, a bunch of aunties, like answering phone lines, taking messages. <laughs> Bruh, you try to call my wife and ask her if I take a message for me. <laughs> Alexi, tell me a story of what happened. <laughs> Better yet, better yet, go Helena's. Should leave a message for Cowway with his wife at Helena's. I like to see what's going to happen. It'll that, be funny. Uh, no be shame, you guys. Uh, call him I if, you know, uh, maybe my passion is a little standoffish sometimes. Well, I'm just real passionate about this, and it takes a tremendous amount of dedication and hard, hard work. And those three things is kind of like when st stepping stone. Step over it, then come. But if not, they can show you how. Yeah, baby steps. And Remember? just so you don't feel bad, Uncle Kawe is general. He don't like anybody. <laughs> so if you don't think he like you, you, that's normal. But if you want him to grow on you or you to grow on him, you got to pull some weeds. And if you pull weeds good, Uncle Kawe likes you. You know what I'm saying? You show up 20 times and you pull weeds good 19 of those times. Uncle Kawe might even consider it. Friendship, but as long as it's 2022. Yeah, that's the reality. That's why, guys, yeah? The, the actual planting of taro. Take one second for plant one taro. That's the reality. Planting taro, take one second. Digging the hole, I don't know, might take you 14 thrusts with 145-pound oh, -oh. Um, Before you hit that, you have to wait six weeks after you cut down some bushes. I mean, you get one whole process before you get to the point where... You can put the kalo in the ground. And I don't like know if you like plant kalo. I like know if you like poo weeds. Because that's basically it. Take one second for put, put, put the kalo in the ground. And then it's weed maintenance. Like when baby, until they come healthy. And if you neglect your baby, they're not going to come healthy. Period. Yeah, so that's the commitment. And once you put them in the ground, you got to be committed to them. Otherwise, they're going to die. <laughs> Period. But if... Not in Kahana, I'm going to take care of them, but that's not the point. The point is that you come take care of them, and, and you, 
Uncle Carl is Carlo Adoption Agency. <laughs> Just go over there, show up and plant, and then Uncle Carl, you know. Taro. Oh, nobody Carl. come take care of you. If I need a bush Just not try to show up late for try to pull your tarot later after you never pull weeds, care. <laughs> that move no work. Yeah, yeah, that's the truth. That's why, like, it ain't no glorious. Yeah, it ain't no glory. The fucking pictures with the beautiful pats and all of that. That's after you and weed. For five you, hours. you know what the glory is? The glory is while you're weeding for five hours, your kids are swimming in the stream. Yes, man. Enjoying ourselves. Yeah. And then clean air. And when they're dirty at the Aina, they're not dirty. Yeah. They're muddy for. They're muddy for. No, when really. I, when I encourage that, bro. Mud and play days. Yeah. yeah? Mud and play days. Mud and play. Yep. Come on, the kids come out. Mud and play. Come to the island, get introduced to it in mud and play. Yeah. I, th I think that's the other part is, I'm not is the glory of the kids of the Aina. Come Aina kids, not like come Aina kids. You know, like the agency. <laughs> He's talking about actual kids that are come Aina. <laughs> okay, okay. Just wanted to get yeah, that straight. <laughs> I thought he was telling me for call come Aina kids. <laughs> I tell you guys what, I want to have a, a confession. If you guys have a hard time communicating with other people, then you're just like me and Uncle Kyle. We get miscommunications all the time. Does she live in between us? <laughs> <laughs> I definitely, I definitely, I'm not ready this week, but I'm going to remember next week what our best miscommunication of the week is, and I'm going to try to bring it up. And then be, it's probably a good one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> our problem is when we miscommunicate, we tend to forget about that one because we're trying to communicate. But it's usually pretty good. Good stuff. And in the process of farming taro, you're trying to communicate to develop the language to consistently get good food. And sometimes there's miscommunications in that and it takes time. So it is a commitment. That's the reality. I want to reinforce that because a lot of people, they just show up and then that's it. They think they did it. And then they have this false sense of what it is to farm taro, what it is to malama this kuleana. And then at the end of the day, we've lost that opportunity to create that lasting relationship. Legacy. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. It's a relationship that you can participate in for the rest of your life. Anywhere. 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 Yeah. No gotta be Kahana. You know, right now, get six places you can come play. And that's six places that we're allowed to go. Anybody out there like Lo'i at your place? Bala, we need to make some community gardens. Yeah, we've been doing the call out there. We've been getting more interest as far as people wanting Ohana gardens. Good. So they're happening. We got one of the young boys. Hey, young boy, try come over here, sit down for just a second. We'll put you on. We'll get you in trouble. Right over here. Perfect, perfect. What's your name, young man? Makua Karel. And um, what day of the week is it? It's a Thursday. And what we do on Thursday? Kui. What you in Kui tonight? Um, some taro. How's the taro? Good. How's them compared to last week's? It's improving. Improving the stroke. The Kahlo? The Kahlo, yeah, just everything. It's just getting easier and easier. I heard you gave him a pig. I have a pig. What's your pig's name? Kui. <laughs> so you come to Kui Thursday and you get a pig named Kui. Yeah. And what you do with your pig? I feed it all my food. I play with my pig. Um. Hey guys, when your 13 year old tells you he's playing with his pig, it's because he is. <laughs> yeah. Huh. All right. Well, uh, who eats the poi in your family? Like, what, what, what do you cook eat on Thursday? What did you make today? You made taro. I made food. You made food? For my dad, my papa, myself. Basically, my whole family. Major. Is it something you enjoy doing? Yeah. I enjoy it. How many weeks has this been? It's my seventh week. Seven consecutive weeks coming cook eat for his family. Let me just tell you, week one, long lip. Today, hey, lip is smiling. Boy is doing good. Yes, sir. Only took seven weeks. 
Well, he comes on Thursday. He cooties. Changed school. Got a pig. Things is looking up for you, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Well, Nicole Carrera, you've been on the Kahlo couch, and I'm happy that you, one of the young tigers out there, we're going to see you on Saturday? Yeah. Yeah? Dad, you bringing them? Okay. Urch. You went to the first Urch. No. You was at Urch, yeah, Uncle Chance? You oh, was there. You was there. Oh, the Urch. The Urch. Oh, the yeah, Urch. The Tell Urch. us about Urch. Tell us about Urch. What you did at Urch? It was fun. It was really fun. We moved a whole bunch of rocks out of the stream, and we we pulled a whole bunch of weeds out of the lo'i. This is all while Kawe's brother, who's a pastor, is reading scripture, talking about Haloa and Jesus. Yeah, that was crazy. That was actually the first time I think I really was paying attention in church. I had something for those pulling that weeds. Awesome thing. That was an awesome thing. This is our second annual urch on our third anniversary, which is happens to be Kawe's 147th birthday. Um, yes, sir. Hey, Kawe, officially you'll be a kupuna ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can get by the kind car. And I have to call him Tutu Man over here. Hey, we're going Tutu Man's patch. Where's that? Kahana. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I get me making jokes. Nicole, it was nice to have you on the show. You have a blessed evening. Love you, bye. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, young uh, Hammer's coming up strong. Yeah, shout out to that young man, bro. Well, guys, that's what we do. That's one of the young, the young ins that uh, comes and checks us out. As he mentioned, it's week seven. Yeah, um, yeah. I think, I think what we're gonna um, shoot to have his dad on the couch next week. Yeah. Okay. Some perfect example. We're making a time. hot date. You heard that, Chance? Next week, four o'clock. You're on the couch. Okay. You know, one thing, la, 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 I was like Uncle Kyle, uh, when I was small, I had. Really care at some schools, all kinds of schools. Do you find the right school? Yeah? And, or you find the right place? Yeah? Do you, be, you know where you belong. And now he's a teacher at Uncle Daniel's Farm yes, School. Sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, but, that, you know, that's like when Carlo, maybe he was in the wrong type of patch and never have streaming water. Yeah, maybe the water wasn't flowing so good. Or it wasn't, he wasn't catching them. Maybe he was on the side where the ebb wasn't and the water wasn't catching you. Whatever it is. You can always cut yourself by and replant yourself in another tower patch. Yeah? Because you're still the huli. You're still the valuable kalo. Whatever variety. Yeah? And I love that we get the opportunity to do that, bro. And that's what this farm school is, you guys. That's the kind of opportunity that it provides, bro. Uh, we hope that what we get over here, you guys see as good, positive lapo that is nourishing. And, um, the relationships that we get with Haloa and our children and each other and the community is something that's positive, like flowing water. And you cannot, you can, you can only grow good if you get those two things, yes? Like good sun. <laughs> good sun, sun, water, and then some, some land, man. Love you too, boy. We hope we, we hope we are uh, inspiring some people out there, you guys, because, um, you can come down to the guy in the mirror, for real. Uh, you Moku Akanis out there, you know, when you come down to actually who can feed your family. Not safe ways, not young brother. You cannot blame nobody. You cannot blame nobody. If the thing stop coming, the food, except the guy in the mirror. Because now is the time for act. You had plenty of time for act. You can nobody to blame, bro. And the shit hit the fan. And you know more food for your kids, bro. Nobody to blame. What we're going to get. But if you get yours, then somebody else can have. Yeah? You get yours, you get yours, you get yours, you get yours. Then collectively, we might be able to help other people. And that's the point. I think that's important, call. And I just want to reiterate what my brother's saying here. Hey, guys. I hope you're hearing us. Now's the time to plant. Not like next generation, not like next week, like right now. And besides even connecting with guys like us that are actually offering space and education on planting, is you got to reach out and find us wherever you're at. This is critical in this 
era that we're in, you know, the pandemic, the true pandemic is our inability to act upon our needs. When there is a point in the future when your family is hungry and you are unable to feed them. If you heard this message and you didn't do anything, you know who's responsible. And we're the two guys that we'd hate to tell you so, right. guys, because it sucks to be right on such critical issues like where we're going to find our next meal. Like shop in your spears, buy extra rubber, get extra masks, like serious kind. Practice your skills, bro. Because when the shit at the fan, everybody going to be in the water. Everybody going to be all over. So then your skills going to come to, gonna, bro. <clears throat> yeah. And I don't like go over there. Junk, that's going to be a junk place. I'd rather have abundance and bountifulness and love and aloha. And sharing and caring and community. Because that situation don't sound like on any of the things that I just said. That's what we're trying to build, you guys. We're trying to reinforce that community. Build trust amongst each other. Repair things like broken relationships. Because oftentimes, those that we have the most pilikia with are the people that we love and need the most in our life. Yeah? There's a reason why you always mad at your parents when you're kids. And there's a reason that parents fight so hard to get the kids to understand how important the ohana is. Aye, aye. But as we move forward and grow, it's the community that reinforces all of the lessons that are necessary for life. The truth is, not all knowledge is taught in one household. And therefore, for those trying to find knowledge, sometimes in the household you're at, it doesn't meet your requirements for how knowledge is shared. But that's why there's other households that are open to that. And that's something that's important. And keep that in mind. Like Time we give back to all the people that gave to us and invested in us through education, through their time. Time is such a precious resource. Spend it well. But know that when you're living on an island, part of the expense of living on the island is paying homage to the community and working with your neighbors. Hey. Mo. They're all kind of action over here. Let's go past that calling. Urch <laughs> is happening this weekend. For all you guys listening to the Kalo Couch, the phone is blowing up. The kids are literally crawling over the couch. You guys know what time it is. It's time to go outside, pull some weeds, lick your kid. Find something exciting to do. And if not, reach out to us. Our information is in the link. Check out our cool shirts. You can buy them. Um, yeah, if you guys want to support, let us know what your thoughts are and how you can support. We're open to any kind of interesting ideas. Uh, if you got naughty kids, call up Uncle Carl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to have mud in play. Love you guys. Appreciate you guys, you guys, guys. Uh, hanging with us. Have a whoa, blessed <laughs> evening. Aloha. Here's the last one. Uh, Einstein said. What he said, bro? What he said earlier? It's not those evil people going to ruin the world. It's those that stand around and watch and do nothing. And allow them. That's going to ruin the world. So which one you going to be? I know which one I'm going to be. I'm going to make a change in the world. And you said. Because these kids are so important. You said, Ask your mom. You said, well, I cannot even imagine his mother being hungry. Yeah? You and it's our you, fault. So we end a song? Yeah. Oh, and on one song. Shoot. Deep down inside, long time come, darkness seeking light. Out of the womb, he was sacrificed, placed in the tomb, and on the third day, he rise. 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 Forever 
live in grace Free my soul, Lord, show me my place Let the righteousness cover All the earth like the water Covers the sea yeah. Third day him rise Third day him rise Third day him rise Third day him rise Love you guys! <laughs>